uh, original canon law uh, came in, and that is what's now known today as the Uniform Commercial Code. Now, we look into uh, the admiralty law side of things. Uh, there's been a lot of things about filings, but again, is one thing that we all have certainly missed the commercial boat sailing the seas of commerce is the, uh, the look at the SESTA KV uh, trusts and how the administration of dead estates was promulgated into the codification of, uh, of the laws of public law. Now, when we see that, uh, um, for an example, I'll just quote a piece of U.S. code, um, was Public Law 102. And if you have a look uh, or Google Public Law 102, you'll find out that the, uh, the Noahide laws was hidden and disguised into public law un under the premise of Education Day. And it's a, a respect to the, uh, to the turn of Noahide laws, which we find out are Talmudic. So it cannot be denied that there is a certain level of secret uh, ecclesiastical uh, and, uh, and other types of uh, jurisdictional uh, church authoritative law, such as the Roman Rota, that has been used and utilized in the, uh, uh, the background of the codings of statutory law. So, that's a big long-winded one, uh, but nonetheless, is, uh, it is by, by seeing that uh, you now actually have a clear-cut chance based on not coming and trying procedures, but having the knowledge and the competence behind you uh, to be able to face uh, for an example, the, uh, the, the, the outer, inner, and middle temple esquires uh, of these associations, y you start to see that it's quite, um, it's quite deep-rooted that you, you literally are and become the law when you read the positive law and, and the divine law, ecclesiastical law, and, and uh, uh, the other canons, the natural ones of, uh, of one heaven. Uh, because it gives you the resonation of the power where uh, it should be possible for you to not work, walk into any courtroom, not have to, to settle your affairs before the court. Well, let me say that again, is be competent and responsible to settle your affairs before the court. Uh, uh, the only way you should... Uh, be in such a venue is if you are brought there uh, and if, if and such that you are is in such uh, circumstances is it's the resonation and the power of the memorization and the understanding of this work that should stand for itself in your own energy field uh, I really don't believe you need paper it's as as you start to read these the words on there, as you start to understand the power of of the ecclesiastical side uh, that they would pretend doesn't exist, but absolutely does because they have to follow ecclesiastical procedure, or they cannot sit there by divine right. Uh, so when we see that, uh, we also see that you now become the paperwork. Uh, Terry, um, I don't have it called up, but um, uh, is there something that we can uh, just quickly share in regards to uh, the steps uh, for uh, for for starting into the uh, the other uh, notices?
Uh, let me see. The um, the uh, dishonor. Uh-huh. What occurs when there's dishonor? Yeah. Okay. So yeah, that, that's a great. We'll start there. That's a great one. Okay. So um, yeah, is okay. So when when you don't get a response, right? So let's have a look, have a look here. So. Uh, the the page isn't finished yet. Uh, Frank is again is working as hu- as hard as he can, and uh, but I'm just going to read uh, through what we have so far. Mm-hmm. Okay, so uh, and again, is these uh, these step, steps will be up on uh, oneheaven.org. So that's one dash heaven.org. Uh, so when you have no response, okay. So the definition is when uh, it, it, when there's no response to the following service in the ecclesiastical deed poll, or any ecclesiastical deed. Effect. Non-response is the most common dishonor of the Roman system and its agents. It has no material effect on the legitimacy of the deed. So and as long as service can be pr- proven to have occurred after the appropriate expiry of time, the non-response is confirmation of the dishonor and right to move to the next step. So the action of that effect is so long as sufficient time has been provided for for a proper response, the next step should be to prepare and serve the next deed and associated instruments. If an ecclesiastical deed poll has been ignored, the next step will be the service of a deed of ecclesiastical dishonor. Okay, so let's have a look if it's uh, returned without comment. Okay, so the effect is so long as service can be proven to have occurred in the first instance, the deed is effectively the same as if they had kept it and not responded. The next step should be to prepare and serve the next deed associated with the instruments. An ecclesiastical deed poll has been ignored. The next step will be the service of a deed of ecclesiastical dishonor. Okay. Now, it's absolutely important to... Uh, fall into a self-responsibility of file keeping and uh, uh, get yourself uh, either a file folder or some type of filing system, say a computer or or other way of uh, keeping file. And when you send a deed poll, just uh, to recap, you never put a registered sticker or a date ever, ever on a deed poll. However, you send it registered mail in an envelope and take a uh, photocopy, or as a friend of mine does, he, he uh, takes a digital photograph of everything uh, and use these as evidence for you must keep evidence of the registered mail. Now, what the registered mail does is, why is it a red side sticker? Well, it's actually representing, ready for this, the the red side of the Rorick Pact, which is, you'll see the, uh, the, the Rorick banner for peace, which is Pax Cult Aura, or Pax, or Treaty of Culture. We get the term culture from the cult of Ur. Uh, it's red side because again, as it represents the king's ransom or the or, or the king's jurisdiction of crossing. Uh, in other words, that's also the private international banking side. Another reason why it's red. Uh, just debunking a little thing about the, uh, the the color of red meaning sovereign, which it doesn't. Uh, <clears throat> So uh, we now have a a legitimate uh, recognition because a register, regis, meaning king, is actually a official lien. So just the act of sending something is a recognition of a lien. So evidence of that is what you want to collect and keep good 
uh, filing and record keeping on because what you want to do is register all these things uh, when you do your UCC filing. And uh, one way to do that is you'll see, and if, if Terry, if you could maybe pu punch it into the screen because I don't have it because I'm calling in, uh, is uh, the link to the time uh, converter. Now, what we want to do with the time converter is something uh, very, very crucial, and that's um, whenever you're sending a bill, you want to register the bill first in the Eucadian time registry system. And by getting a unique registry number for that bill is you now have the proper registration of that bill in the Society of One Heaven. Uh, that registry number is going to be used on your filing. And of course, it, uh, it lets the, uh, the consignee know that a registered uh, injury has been properly promulgated uh, from a Society of One Heaven. So with that is we now have the proper registration on the side of the consigner uh, giving notice in the UCC. Terry, anything else you'd like to add to that? Uh, no, that's sounding really good, Brian. Um, looking at right now to uh, get to the link for the time converter here. So mm -hmm. uh, now I did go down through the list. Okay, was the uh, dishonor was uh, returned? Uh, well, no response. You covered that. Returned without comment. Mm -hmm. Returned and rejected is the third one. Okay. For, for uh, refused on health grounds. Okay, why don't I why don't I cover both of those? Because those are important. Yes. Yeah. Okay, so returned and rejected. So if the effect is all ecclesiastical deeds are executed when receded, uh, and not dependent upon the approval or rejection of the other party, when a deed is returned for some notice of rejection, then the Roman agent has provided proof of dishonor. Now that's important. Going back to the, uh, when you look at the deed poll, which the example is on Article 133 of Positive Law, you will see that uh, you, you do not address it to a person. Now that's important. You address it to the executors and administrators handling the entity uh, that is seeking surety. Now, I, I mentioned that is important in in regards to this because basically, is uh, if if say you slap a a deed pole on the back of say a live an extract of life birth and send it back into vital, vital statistics, and they say to you. Uh, there's nobody here. We don't know what you mean. This is this is frivolous. And it, well, basically, what happened was under the ancient right of notice to agent is notice to principal. They have now broken their own chain of command, and as such, are probably and can be held fully and responsible liable under the Anti-Bribery Oath Act of uh, 2005 that was ratified against the, in the, by the United Nations. Now, that's an important piece of, of enforcement uh, because that is a supreme dishonor in their system by agents refusing to pass on uh, and convey deeds. Now, I don't know about the rest of the world, but from where I'm standing, 
uh, when you when you look at the police cars here, and I've shown uh, examples of this. Because